Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Showcase video. Today we're putting the spotlight on a true powerhouse, Heracross. And not just any Heracross, we're running a unique loaded dice moveset, and we'll see how it performs across three battles. This set is all about maximizing multi-hit moves and turning Heracross into a serious threat. Can this bug and fighting type break through some tough teams? Stick around to find out. The first battle with Heracross is against Reese from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join if you want to battle me yourself. If you're excited to see this Heracross in action, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, let's jump into these battles. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So he leads off with Tidal Wave, the Satitan, as I led off with Turkey, the Moltres. Um, so with interesting lead from both sides. I'm guessing they expected a Ninetales lead, so they want to take advantage of the snow. Which makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go for a Willow here because I'm not confident Flame Throw will KO for a start. And also burning this thing is going to be really clutch. So they actually go for a Belly Drum right off the bat. And we go for a Willow Wisp, which is going to burn them, which is fantastic. So burning a Belly Drum on is always beneficial. Now they can have Liquidation. They can have Liquidation, I believe. Um, so we do need to watch out for that still. I'm, I'm pretty sure plus six will still KO us. But I could be completely wrong there. They're going to get that Citrus Berry, which is fine. And then let's go for a flamethrower. I don't see any reason not to go for a flamethrower. They go for an ice spinner. That's going to do a lot of damage, probably. Yeah, it does over half, but we are a defensive Moltres. So we take it like a champ, go for a flamethrower and take out that Satitan, which is fantastic. So with Satitan out of the way, I'm not too worried anymore. Pochita comes in. That's going to be the Skeledurge, right? Yes, I've battled Reese before and they've used the Skeledurge called Pochita. Uh, Pochita. Um, so what I'm going to do here is because I can still use Moltres. I'm going to go for a roost and I'm going to let this thing do its torch song thing, whatever it wants to do to us. I'm going to roost regardless, get my health back, as uh, they go for the Torch Song, they're going to get to plus two, I'm, I'm guessing it's Throat Spray or Heavy Duty Boots or something like that, um, but either way, they get a crit, which is unfortunate, but it doesn't do too much damage at least, they get the Special Attack Boost, and then they are Throat Spray, I, I'm, I knew it, I knew it was Throat Spray, I vaguely remembered it from the last time we battled, so I'm going to go for a U-turn now and get on out of here, but now the real question is, what do I actually switch into this thing, so um, Skeledurge is a threat right now, a real big threat right now. Do I have a switch in? I guess I have Kingdra. Yeah, let's go Kingdra. Kingdra can take care of the Skeledurge, no problem. So we'll bring Queendra, the Kingdra. There we go. They do go for a Torch Song, which is fine. It's four times resisted, so even at plus two, it still ain't doing diddly squat to us. Um, now I just need to fire off a Hydro Pump, right? I just scare this thing out of a Hydro Pump. That's all I need to do. So Hydro Pump comes through. Should do a lot of damage. It actually cleanly takes out the Skeledurge. No critical hit needed. And that is a dead crocodile right there. Who would have thought a crocodile would go down to water? It's crazy. Crazy. Or um, whatever the whatever, whatever species it is. Crocodile, alligator, I don't care. Anyway, this thing comes in. Now, I don't want to stay in here. I do need to weaken this thing first. I might just drop a Draco. I think I will just drop a Draco right now. It won't KO the chestnut unless we get a crit. No crit though, which is great. Fine, whatever. They go for a Trailblaze. Ooh, that is particularly dangerous. I'll let Kingdra go down here. So they go for a Drain Punch, which isn't going to KO us. But it does get them some health back. Which is going to be super important for them, because this Draco Meteor won't KO now. Unless we get a crit. We have got Sniper. And we have got the scope lens, sorry. So there is a higher chance of a crit there. So anyway, go for another Draco. We got the health pretty low, which is all that matters. They go for a Drain Punch again. That's going to give him some health back. Now Now we're in a really decent position again. And um, this time, though, in what we're going to do is I firmly believe this Chestnut can't really touch Heracross. So I'm going to bring Heracross in now. I think now is the time. I think now is the time. So Heracross comes in. We're going to go for that big Trailblaze right now, which is not very effective, but it should still do a lot of damage. It might even KO them if they're an offensive variant. So they go for a knockoff, knocking off our loaded dice. That's a really good play. That's definitely going to work out in their favor. As we go for that Trailblaze, which is, of course, not going to KO them. But it's fine. They've got knockoff, Drain Punch, Trailblaze. Are they Belly Drum? Are they a Belly Drum set? Let's go for another Trailblaze, just in, just in case we've got a Scarf one on their team. And um, just as also just get the... May as well get the speed boost. And also, it's 100% accurate move. So, um, we may as well finish Chestnut off with that. So, we're looking pretty good with Heracross right now, which is fantastic. And we get a Moxie boost to go with it. Gear Shift comes in. That is going to be the Rev of Room. 
Now, Revo Vroom's an interesting one here because the fact that they brought it in, knowing we're at plus one with a close combat, tells me they're either A, baiting the close combat, or I can't tear a rock yet. I think they're going to tear it, but what type would they tear her into here? Flying, maybe? I don't know whether Rock Blast is the best option to go for here. Do we predict the terror? Or are they trying to take a close combat? Do they think they can take one? Are they focus sashed? I think we do terror here. I think we terror because they're going to terror. I think they're going to terror. I really think they're going to terror. So we're going to terror rock. And hopefully they go for a poison type move. If they don't terror. If they go for a spin out or an iron head, it's going to KO us, but it's fine. I, I have a feeling they're going to terror, and I could be really wrong. I am wrong. So Rock Blast is going to come through right now and do nothing. Because we did lose, of course. But we popped their air balloon at least, I guess. So Heracross comes through. We're going to hit two times. Three times. Four times. Who needs loaded dice? Five times. Who needs loaded dice? We hit five times. They go for a shift gear. Which is going to boost their attack. I should have close combated. Should have close combated. But we are at plus two speed as well. So it all comes down to whether I can remember my speed tiers or not. Let's go for a close combat. Screw it. We do our speed still, which is fantastic. Even after a shift gear. We're looking really good with Heracross right now, which is fantastic. I had a feeling Heracross was still out of speed. Because I know Revan Room's a car and everything, but it's not that fast. You know, you'd, you'd think it'd be a lot faster. So we get a Moxie boost again, and we're looking real, real clean right now. Fajin comes in, which is going to be the Abomus now. No, the Aquacable comes in. Okay, so do we close combat? Um, if they get an Aqua Step off, it's going to really sting. I think we just go for a close combat here. Yeah, close combat comes through. It's so a plus two. KOs the Quackable, which is fantastic. And that is going to be the game, I think. Unless the Abomus now pulls out a really cool Terror here. But well, Bombastone is normally like Terra Fire, right? To resist fire. Um, so we might be better off going for a Rock Blast. But they're going to get a defense boost as well. So they might actually live. Because the problem is we haven't got loaded dice anymore. So Rock Blast becomes less of a viable option. They get the Snow Warning. However, if they Terra here, they lose the defense boost. So I'm actually not too worried. Let's go for a close combat. Boom. Down goes the Obama Snow, and that is going to be the game. This Heracross set is wild. I love it. I absolutely adore it. GG, Reese. What an awesome display of power from Heracross. The next battle is against Alexander, and they have some interesting sets, to say the least. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Alexander. So he leads off with Iron Godzilla, the, the uh, Iron Fawns, as I led off with Miascarada. So this is a really good lead for us. I figured Miascarada would be a good lead against their team. Um, obviously, I'm not going to see them Flower Trick because they could tear her off the bat. You never know. They haven't got the best switching in the world to this thing other than Como. So if we assume they're going to go Como here, we should go for a, a U-turn. I'm going to go straight for a U-turn. They actually stay in, interestingly enough. And to do what exactly, I don't know. That U-turn does a lot of damage, though, which is great. And now what we can do is we can go into our dedicated Iron Fawns Dealer Wiverer, which is going to be Donphan. So we'll go into Donphan now. Donphan can deal with Iron Fawns, no problem. Now, you may have noticed my opponent's got a Lugia on her team. I see it as a challenge. So Rock Slide comes through. It's going to do no damage to Donphan, of course. Um, and we're going to get our Stealth Rocks up here. There's no reason not to get Stealth Rocks up here. If, even if they Dragon Ants, you know, there's, there's nothing they can do. So, they go for a Bite. Interesting. So, Bite. It doesn't get crunched, does it? I forgot it doesn't get crunch. Oh, does it? I don't know. Stealth Rocks are going to come through anyway, which is great. And uh, we'll just smack this thing in the face of an Earthquake now, which is pretty much the only way we're going to get rid of this thing. So, let's go for it. They go for another Bite. Obviously, Rocky Helmet's playing into effect here a little bit, and that's going to give some damage to them. As we go for an EQ and we cleanly take out the Iron Fawns, no problem. So Iron Godzilla goes down. And now we just have to worry about it. So the Como could easily set up and sweep us. That's for sure. The Como could easily set up and sweep us. But I, I believe Heracross can do really well here. In comes Pokeven.com, the Greninja. Nice and shiny. Get some Stealth Rock. It is shiny, of course, so we know it's not Battle Bond at least. Um, so I don't feel too bad about letting Donphan go down here. We don't really need Donphan for much else. I should come, come, could come in clutch, though, if that Como gets set up. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning more towards a uh, switch into uh, Miascarada. I think I'll go Miascarada. I don't think they'll go for an Ice Beam. I think they go for a Water type move. If they go for an Ice Beam here, predicting the Miascarada, that's a very good play. And um, we'll have to see what they do. So Miascarada comes in, like so. 
They get Water Shuriken. Water Shuriken. And that's going to do not much damage to Miascarada, of course. Um, as it only hits twice, so they're not loaded dice either, which is interesting. Um, now I can just go straight for a U-turn again. There's no real reason not to, and this Greninja should go down. They go for another Water Shuriken. They are adamant they're going to get some damage off on this Miascarada, which is fair enough. As um, what we can do now is uh, we could just... Hopefully this U-turn doesn't KO. They get a crit, though. Hit three times as well. Um, hopefully this U-turn doesn't KO. I have a feeling it won't KO. It won't KO, that's good. Because now, we're in a very good position with Heracross. Why are we in a good position with Heracross? Because we can trailblaze this thing to death. So let's go for the Hercules switch, the Heracross, like so. And we'll go for a trailblaze. There's no reason not to go for a trailblaze. And you know what's great? If we get a Moxie boost here from this Greninja, we are going to be sitting pretty. So they go for another Water Shuriken, which is going to bounce right off Heracross. Hopefully we only see two time hit. Three times. Four times. That's it, four times. That's fine. Four times a hit is great. We go for a Trailblaze. That should take out the Greninja from there as it does. Give us a nice speed boost. And then we're also going to get a Moxie boost. So Heracross is already set up, ready to go. They've got Skeleton, which probably has not aware, which is going to be the bane of our existence if um, we can't KO with uh, Rock Blast. But we have got the Terror Rock for boosting the power of Rock Blast. So we should be fine. In comes the biggest bird, which is going to be the Lugia, right? Yeah, Lugia comes in. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, unfortunately, for them. And it has got pressure, so we are losing some PP here, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I think I will Terra here. Terra Rock Blast should come through for us. And if we miss, at least we're Terra, so we know we can take an Aero Blast to the face. Uh, at least one of them, anyway. So we'll Terra Rock now. Like so. We'll Terra Rock. Turn into a nice and powerful Rock type, and then just smack this. Just throw some pebbles at this Lugia's face, pretty much. Um, so let's see how this plays out. Let's just see how this plays out. So we've got 1k over Heracross, which is great. Uh, Rock Blast comes through. And there we go. That Lugia is, yep, dead. Because Loaded Dice makes it guaranteed 4 hits. And we only need 3. So there's the Lugia gone, which is fantastic. Now that Skeledurge, again, the Skeledurge is what's making me a bit worried. Because I don't think even, because obviously Moxie doesn't matter if they've got Unaware. So I don't think we can KO that thing with one Rock Blast, unless we hit all five times, potentially. With Terra Rock, maybe. We might be all right, you know. Jason's going to come in. Who's Jason? The Como. Get some Stealth Rock Chip. That's all we well and good. Um, we have to hit this thing with Close Combat. There's no real reason not to, so let's go for it. Close Combat comes through. And that Como is dead. And we are minus in defenses now, so the Ice Shard from Mamoswine could come close to KOing us. But I'm not too worried. So close combat comes through, takes out the Como, which is fantastic. And we get another Moxie boost. Lewis comes in. Who's Lewis? That is the Skeledurge. So if this Skeledurge is unaware, like I think it might be, Rock Blast might not KO, but I feel like it does still KO anyway. So let's go for the Rock Blast and find out. And hopefully we don't miss. Rock Blast comes through with the Terra Rock power added to it. And that is definitely unaware, but I'm pretty confident that KOs. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep, definitely KOs the Skeledurge. So Skeledurge goes down. Now we've just got the Mamoswine. Now the Mamoswine... Mamoswine is an interesting one because I, if they're banded with Ice Shard, then they at least get the KO on the Heracross. But it's looking like it's going to be a 6-0 sweep with Heracross right now, which is exactly what we're looking for. PM7 comes in the Mamoswine. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, breaking a potential Sash. Not that it matters because we are going to hit this thing with our move that we haven't used yet, Pin Missile, which is normal neutral effective against this thing. Pin Missile comes through. Oh, that is definitely KO in that Mama Swine. Definitely KO in that Mama Swine right there as the Mama Swine finally goes down. And we got a nice little 6 0 sweep. No, not 6 0. Not. Heracross didn't get 6 KOs, but we got a 6 0. So, you know what? I take it. I, we take those. Heracross come through. What an interesting game. Ah, oh, well. At least Heracross got to shine bright in that one. The next one is against Marvin, and this one is a good one. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Marvin. So they're going to lead off with Killer Wattrel. Nice and shiny. Is that led off with Vimto, the Alola Ninetales? I figured this was a good lead. Um, I did kind of figure they might lead with this thing because it does pretty well against my team. Um, so I'm going to go straight for an Aurora Veil here. I don't see any reason not to. I don't see a Defogger on the team unless Hydreigon gets it or this thing gets it. But I don't think they do. They withdraw the Killer Wattrel, which is fine. What are they going to go into? Gambit? Mamoswine, the once well-trained. Nice. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So nice and shiny Mammoth Swine. We go for an Aurora Veil. Of course, that's going to set up the screens on both. Well, both screens in one turn, which is fantastic. And then we're going to switch on out of there. 
So I'm going to go into my Moltres. Moltres seems like the most optimal switch here. So let's do that. As Moltres can now come in safely under the name Turkey. And take any hit this thing wants to throw at us. Now they go for a Rock Blast, which is a really cool move to have on a Mama Swine. I wasn't expecting the Rock Blast on the Ninetales. Um, I was expecting maybe Stealth Rocks at most. Um, but now that that thing's hit me four times with Rock Blast, we can deduct they are probably loaded dice. And they're probably going to go for another one. So what do we do here? That is the real question. I want to go Meow Scarada. I don't think... I think we can just go for a U-turn here. Um, because... Uh, no, nah, actually, that was a bad play. I don't really have a switch into Mamoswine um, at the moment. Because it has Rock Blast. And it can also go for Icicle Spear as well, which is very bad. So um, now we get a free switch in with whatever we want, which is the best part about this. So let's go for... I'm, I'm leaning towards Kingdra. Leaning towards Kingdra or Meow Scarada. I think Meow Scarada is the best one because we can just go straight for a flower trick and it's a critical hit every single time. So we know it'll probably take out the Mama Swine from here. So let's go for a flower trick. And if it doesn't take them out, we can at least finish this thing off with a Trailblaze from our Heracross. Get a speed boost and go from there. So they're actually going to Terrastalize. No! What type are they going to Terrastalize into? Hopefully Rock. Rock would be nice. Grass. They are Terra Grass, which is really interesting. I should have scouted by going for a U-turn. That Mama Swine is going to screw me up. So anyway, Flower Trick comes through. Obviously, it's not going to do much damage being a Grass-type move on a Grass-type. But you know what? It's still a bit of chip at the end of the day. We get a crit, obviously. And then they go for an Icicle Spear, which is going to, unfortunately, even for Aurora Veil... Actually, if they only hit four times, we're all right. If they only hit four times, we're all right. Oh, never mind. The fourth time was a crit. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I have a feeling we would have lived as well. But anyway. Anyway. We lost two months to this Mammoth Swine. I'm not looking... He's not looking good. I tell thee what. It does not look good. So what do we do here? I'm leaning to... I'm leaning towards Heracross now. Really leaning towards Heracross now. So we'll go Heracross. We'll go for that pin missile. We should outspeed the Mammoth Swine here. No problem. There we go. We outspeed, of course. We go. Loaded dice. This is loaded dice. Heracross comes through. Takes out the Mammoth Swine, which is absolutely fantastic. So Heracross come through in the save day. And we're going to get a nice Moxie boost. Now, this also baits in the Killer Wattrel, which we can then Terra Rock on. Go for a Trailblaze. Then finish it off with a Rock Blast. And we should be golden. We should be just golden right there. So, and because they've already Terraed, we don't have to worry about any surprise Terrors or anything like that. So Snow is going to stop. Aurora Veil still going strong. We are looking pretty. Killer Watcher, the once well trained, comes in again. Killer Watcher's massive. Like, I just realized how big it is. Let's Terra Rock to be resistant to the flying type move that might be coming our way. And we will Trailblaze this thing to be outspeeding it. So, we Terra Rock like so. We're going to get our Terra Orb all filled up with energy. Blast it onto our hair across his face. And make ourselves have a temple on our head. A very big temple. With rocks and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, they do go for an air slash. Hopefully, we don't flinch here because that would be unfortunate. We don't. We go for a trailblaze. No damage, of course, but we do get that useful speed boost, which is what we wanted. So now we can go for a rock blast, and we should be able to finish off this killer watchful. So rock blast comes through. There we go. Rock blast is going to come through right now. KOs the killer watchful in two clean hits, and then we're going to get yet another moxie boost. I tell you what, I love this Heracross set so much. It is just absolutely defying all odds and destroying teams left, right, and center, which is amazing. Ursa Luna comes in. That's a good switch. However, I see what they're doing. They're trying to get us to go for close combat to lower our defenses. That's what they're trying. I'm going to have to go for it anyway. Let's go for a close combat and just take this thing out. They actually go for a protect. So they're going to try and get that flame body, which makes sense. So you go for that as uh, we go for a close combat and that obviously fails. Now, the King Gambit is in the back there. If they can get a defense drop, like they have done, and also wear off our Aurora Veil, they're actually in a much better position with King Gambit. They can definitely bring it in after this. So, um, I'm going to go for a close combat regardless. There we go. Close combat comes through. That cleanly takes out the Ursa Luna, which is fantastic. Now, now they can just bring in the King Gambit, and they can definitely sucker punch us, because we have a defense drop. Aurora Veil's gone. It's not looking good for us, I'm afraid, as we get another Moxie boost, which is fantastic. Sylveon actually comes in, which is a very interesting turn of events. So Sylveon comes in looking nice and shiny. 
And um, we definitely go for a Rock Blast here at plus three. It's definitely going to KO the Sylveon as long as we can hit it, which we do. As there we go, Rock Blast comes through once. There we go, it's a 3-8 KO. 3-8 KO. Boom. Now, they are heavily relying on King Gambit here. That is the problem they've got. They're going to rely heavily on King Gambit. They're going to rely heavily on King Gambit. So, Sylveon goes down. We get another Moxie boost. I don't even need to go for close combat on the uh, King Gambit, to be honest with you. As they bring Hydreigon in, I'm guessing they're trying to get the maximum amount of power from the Supreme Overlord. Which makes a lot of sense. As now we can go for a pin missile. And as long as we don't miss, which we don't. We should be able to KO this Hydreigon in two hits. There we go. Look at that power. From a 25 base power move. Amazing stuff. So Heracross gets... I tell you what, once you get Heracross going with the Moxies, it's hard to stop. Very hard to stop. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw a forfeit here with the King Gambit. King Gambit does come in. Now I want Heracross to get this second kill. I really do. So Supreme Overlord is going to come. We do not need our Moxie boost to KO this thing. What we do need is an Aurora Veil. So I'm going to withdraw my nine tail into my Nine Tails. Because I want Heracross to get the last KO. I really want it to get the last KO. So it's like a challenge. So let's see how, we, how this works out. So Vinto comes in. We get the Snow Warning up, which is fantastic. They do, in fact, go for a Sucker Punch, which is going to fail. And then we get the Aurora Veil up, which is going to be great. So Aurora Veil comes through. Like so, Aurora Veil's there. They probably go for an Iron Head, which is going to KO my Nine Tails, no doubt. But then we can bring Heracross back in, live a Sucker Punch. Yeah, that cleanly takes out Ninetales in one clean hit. But now, I know for a fact Heracross KOs this thing with close combat. So that's that's great. So let's bring Heracross back in now. Uh, this Heracross video was so fun to make. I mean, you might not even be watching this, but, this part because this will be later. But whew, I really enjoyed making these Heracross battles. Let's go for a close combat and finish off this game against the King Gambit now that we got the Aurora Veil up. They go for the Sucker Punch. It's not going to KO because of the Aurora Veil. We go for a CC. And that is a dead King Gambit. And that is going to be the game. So GG Marvin. Fun game. Really enjoyed that one. Heracross shined like a bright star in the sky. And that is going to be the game. What a game. Heracross really put in the work in that one. So you thought the video was over. Guess again. We have ourselves a bonus battle against Jules from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord with our old Weavile team. So let's jump into it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Violet. So they're going to lead off with Gnarly, which is the Grim Snarl. So that's, that's um, a well-predicted lead. We go with the Bastiodon. We could have a Steel-type move. We could have Heavy Slam, for example. So they might not want to stay in here. Um, I am going to go straight for the Stealth Rocks. I don't see any reason not to. They actually go for a Taunt, which is fair enough. Taunt's a pretty common move on Grim Snarl. I should have predicted that. Um, but you know what? It's fine. We go for a Stealth Rock, and it fails. Um, so now, if we assume they're going to go for screens, we should switch out into something else. I'm, I'm leaning towards the Cinderace. Leaning towards the Cinderace, so we can court change. That'd be awesome. Let's go Cinderace. Cinderace resists both stab, uh, well, resists its fairy stab anyway. Um, so we can go for a court change just fine. If they do go for a reflect and light screen here. So we'll go Striker and Cinderace. They go for the reflect. They probably go for the light screen the next turn, so we'll court change them. So, Court Change comes through now. They go for a taunt. Oh, they taunt us again! <laughs> I was hoping they wouldn't, but they did. That's fine. And um, we'll Court Change later. It's fine. We'll just U-turn for now. We'll just U-turn for now. And um, they go for the light screen. Yeah, they go for the light screen. It's fine. We'll, we'll get Cinderace in and Court Change again against something else. Um, Cinderace outspeeds everything on the team after all. So, we go for a U-turn. We obviously turn into a bug type. We get a bit of chip on the Grim Snarl. Nothing too nasty. Um, and we get Cinderace out of, the, out of there. So, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I'm leaning towards a Sloking. I'm going to go Sloking. Just because it kind of forces a switch. Kind of. Sludge Bomb will hurt after all. So let's go for a Sludge Bomb. They might go for a Taunt again. Parting Shot's fine. So we get a free Sludge Bomb off on something, which means we get a free, potentially a free Poison, which is nice. So they obviously get our attack and special attack dropped, and then they go back. And now I'm assuming they'll go Incineroar. Or a great tusk, one of the two. So tusk comes in. I wonder what that is. It's obviously the great tusk. Um, so it's going to get the booster energy, which is going to boost its uh, probably attack, right? Attack, yeah. Um, so this sloking is in a very dire situation. We get the sludge bomb off. No poison, that's fine. Um, if we assume they're going to go for that headlong rush, great tusk really hurts our team. Really hurts our team. That's for sure. Really hurts our team. 
So I guess Bastion's not really doing much for us. So we could go into it, get their defenses dropped, go for a body press just to get some chip after a cuss that Merry um, goes up. And then we can just get a free switch in with Weavile or something. I think I will go Bastion and sack it. Not sack it, sack it, but like I said, we got sturdy. So we'll go into Wall Rose, the Bastion. They go for a rapid spin. Ooh, that breaks our sturdy. Oh no. That breaks our sturdy. Oh no. Um, That's unfortunate. They went for a rapid spin. They break our sturdy. Do we Terra here? And body press? They're going to go for a headlong rush or a close combat. One of the two. We should Terra Fairy and body press. I think we Terra Fairy Body Press here. I think this is the only way we can deal with this Great Tusk. It's not going to do much damage, but it'll do damage nonetheless. And we just need to weaken this thing, really. That's all we need to do, weaken it. So we'll Terra Fairy like so, and hopefully they go for a CC instead of a Headlong Rush. They go for the Headlong Rush. It's going to lower their defenses a bit. We do live that, though. We can live two. We can live another one as well. And then we also get the Custard Berry after we live one. So Body Press comes through. No damage, of course. We go for another body press here. They go for another headlong rush, lowering their defenses even further. Brilliant. So Bastion might 1v1 here if this does enough damage. Not does enough damage. So we get the Custat Berry, so let's go for another body press. So now all we need to do is Ice Shard this thing to KO it with Weavile. So Bastion saved the day against the Great Tusk, which is nice. And they go for another Headlong Rush, lowering the defenses. I would have personally gone for a Rapid Spin there. Personally, just to get another Speed Boost. But I guess it doesn't really matter because I think they outspeed everything on our team anyway. So Bastion does go down. But it did well. It did well. It sponged some hits from a from a times 1.2 attack. Protosynthesis boosted Great Tusk. So now we just simply go into Weavile and we should be able to Ice Shard this thing. But first, of course, we'll go for a Fake Out. First of all, we'll go for a fake out. Um, just to get a bit more damage off. Because they have got the reflect up. So we can't underestimate the reflect. So we go for a fake out. It's going to be boosted by normal gem. There we go. And that takes out the great tusk, which is great. Okay, so that, that took out the great tusk. So I should would have taken it out anyway. But it doesn't matter. As long as we got rid of the great tusk. Because great tusk did really well against our team. And we are fine. Gnarly comes in. That is the grim snarl. So... First and foremost, because it's gonna go, they're gonna get the screens up soon. Because the screens are gonna run out soon. Let's go for a knockoff. And um, they go for another reflect. That's fine. Unfortunately, that means that we haven't knocked them off before. We, you know, we haven't got rid of the light clay yet. There's the light clay gone now. So that when they go for a light screen the next turn, it won't last nearly as long at least. So let's go for a triple axle now. They withdraw gnarly. They don't want to set up a light screen. And they're going to blaze the one small train. That's going to be the Incineroar, right? With Intimidate. Yeah, Incineroar comes in. Gets the Intimidate off, which is fine. We get a bit of chip damage with the uh, Triple Axle. If we can hit all three times, that'd be nice. There we go. A bit of chip. Nothing nothing too drastic. We hit three times. They're not Rocky Helmet, which is nice. We didn't get the light screen up. Now, that is important. So, let's go into Suicune now. So, we're going to Suicune. North Wind comes in. There we go. Get the pressure exerted. They go for a knockoff, knocking off our chest there, Barry. That's fine. They can no longer knock off anything. Let's go for a Calm Mind. Let's go and sell up a Calm Mind real quick. So we sell up a Calm Mind. We obviously have speed because Incineroar is very slow. They might go for a parting shot here. If they do, it's fine. If they do, it's fine. They do go for a parting shot. So we're back to neutral special attack. But we've got plus one special defense. So now, and that's going to be crucial for w uh, winning over that Latias. And the Kingdra as well, to an extent. So Gnarly comes in the Grim Snarl. Probably to go for a Taunt first to stop us from Calm Mining again. So let's go for a Scold. There's the Taunt. So we get a nice no light screen Scold off. On the Grim Star, which is nice. Could get a burn as well. We do get the burn, which is nice. 
Now, they probably go for a light screen here. They probably go for a light screen. So now I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking Slow King Sludge Bomb. I'm thinking Cinderace Court Change. I'm, I've got a good plan actually. Let's go Cinderace. Let's go Cinderace. I've got a very good plan. So you know how Dark types can't be affected by Prankster moves, right? So they're gonna try and taunt us. So what we do is we go for Sucker Punch first. It'll fail, and then we can court change. So we'll go for a sucker punch now to turn into a dark type. We go for a sucker punch. If oh it fails, so we don't turn into a dark type. That's annoying. That's annoying. So it didn't work. How I thought it would. I thought Libero would take change into a dark type and then it would fail. Oh well, it's fine. We can handle this, no problem. We can just court change on the next Pokemon that comes in. Poseidon comes in. That's going to be the Kingdra, right? There's no way it's guys. There's no way it's Scarf. Let's go for a Court Change. Court Change comes through, turns into a normal type. So we're going to take this Water type move even better. We get their Light Screen and Reflect real quick, like so. Then they go for an Agility. So that is a terrifying Kingdra right there. A terrifying Kingdra. The Reflect actually wears off. But the light screen's still up, so that's that's it. That's important. So let's go for a U-turn here. They go for a Focus Energy. Oh my God! Focus Energy Agility Kingdra, ladies and gentlemen. That is a terrifying set. So that U-turn does nothing because it's not stabbed or boosted in any way, and it's also minus one attack. So now we have to go into we have to go into Slow King. We have to go into Slow King. We have to paralyze this thing with Thunder Wave. Pretty much. So let's go for a Thunder Wave now. And as long as we don't miss, we're all right. So they're going to Terra. Okay. Okay. Are they going to Terra Ground? Terra Water. Okay, Terra Water is fine. Terra Water is fine. I'm pretty confident we can take a Hydro Pump. I'm pretty confident we can take a Hydro Pump. Maybe not like maybe not a Wave Crash, but Hydro Pump comes through. It's going to be a crit. We know it's going to be a crit because of the Focus Energy and the Sniper. We barely hold on. Go for a Thunder Wave. However, the agility is still up, so we know they still outspeed us, which is bad. So what we have to do here is we have to go for a Sludge Bomb. I would go for a Future Sight, but they've got Incineroar and Grimmsnarl both still alive. Um, the light screen does wear off, so we are in a very big predicament right now. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb. They go for another agility. They want to outspeed everything on the team. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So Sludge Bomb comes through, and that's going to do a decent chunk of damage. Nothing too drastic. Maybe I should have gone for a future sight because this thing's this thing's a threat. If we can force a switch, then that'll be better. They could miss the hydro pump, so let's go for a future sight. Draco Meteor, they're not gonna miss that. Well, they can miss that, but they won't. They get the crit, obviously. It lowers their special attack, but because they're gonna be getting crits constantly, it's the end of the world, really. This thing's really fast right now. This thing's really fast right now. Is it faster than Psychazar though? At plus four. I guess our best bet is Cinderace here with the Sucker Punch. We go Cinderace, we Sucker Punch, and then we fake out with the Weavile. So we Sucker Punch now. Sucker Punch comes through. Turns into a Dark type. We headbutt them in the face. They barely hold on. Go for a Draco Meteor. That's going to get a crit and take us out. Yep, thought so. No chance. But now we can just bring Weavile in and priority Ice Shard it. Which is great. So Kingdra is going to go down here at least. But they did a number to us. This Kingdra did a number to us. This Kingdra did a number to us. So let's see what we can do here. Let's go for an Ice Shard and just take this thing out. Ice Shard comes through. I'm still holding faith that we can still pull this back. But it's going to be really hard. Because that Incineroar is pretty bulky for a start. Gnarly comes in again. And we have to go for a Triple Axle heal. But before we go for a triple axel, I'm going to go for an ice shard just to prioritize that reflect. Get some damage off. There we go. Reflect comes through. And they're only going to get a reflect up because I'm not letting them get a light screen up as well. Which means Cyclozar's Draco Meteor is going to sting a little bit. But we've got Suicune in the back and that's what we don't want. So let's go for an ice shard. They withdraw Gnarly. What are they going to go into? Is Incineroar? Yeah, Blaze comes in. That's the 112 train Blaze. 
So Incineroar comes in. Blaze gets the Intimidate off. We get an Ice Shard off, and that's going to do no damage, obviously, to an Incineroar. Um, now we go into Suicune. They're probably going to go for a Parting Shot, but we have to anyway. So we withdraw Weavile. They probably go for a Parting Shot here, but I can't stay in with Weavile. Weavile's too important for taking out that Latias and the Iron Boulder, potentially. So we'll go Suicune like so. We'll exert some pressure. And there's the Parting Shot. They're going to go straight into Grimmsnarl on the Light Screen. No, they can't, because if they go into Grimmsnarl now, they'll die to the burn. So at least we've got that going for us. Grimmsnarl should die to the burn right now. If they bring it in. Yeah, Gnarly comes in. They're going to bring it in just to sack it, which makes sense. There's the burn. Gnarly goes down. No light screen, which is great. Suicune should be able to take any hit from their team. So in comes Blaze once again. The Incineroar. Gets the Intimidate off once again. We go for a Calm Mind, or do we go for a Scold? Let's go for a Scold. Scold should do a, a decent bit of damage, at least. Yeah, bit of damage to the Incineroar is important. They go for a Willow and they miss. That's unfortunate, but it's a low accuracy move. So you know what? I'm not... I'm not um, going to complain. So Skull comes through again. There's a two shot on the remaining HP of the Incineroar. They go for a Pike shot. And now they can just go into Iron Boulder and set up a Sword Dance if they want to. Especially if they're Booster Energy and Speed, then we're screwed. If they're Booster Energy and Speed, we are actually screwed. Iona, that's going to be the Latias, right? Yeah, Latias comes in. The Reflect wears off, which is nice. Um, now we're going to go straight into Weavile. Because we are immune to one stab and we don't die to a Draco Meteor from this thing. So we go straight to Weavile. We go for a knockoff. So Midnight comes in. They go for an Agility. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary. Let's go for a knockoff. I think we should be alright to go for a knockoff here. They withdraw anyway. Are they going to go Incineroar? Blaze, yeah, that's the Incineroar coming in. That's fine. We're getting chip damage off on the Incineroar, which is important. They do get the Intimidate off, which is fine. We go for a knockoff. And that actually does a lot of damage. Interesting. So we knock off the heavy duty boots. Knockoff does KO here. So we're going to go for another knockoff. So Incineroar goes down, which is fantastic. I think Weavile could win us the game. I, I can't remember if Iron Boulder outspeeds or not. I don't think it does. So we go, they go into Iona, which is once again the Latias. We go for a triple axle here. Triple Axel comes through. Can we hit all three times? That'd be nice. Their weakness policy. Oh dear. That's not good. That's not good. But at least we hit all three times. So the Latias goes down, which is fantastic. Even at minus one attack, Latias still goes down to the Triple Axel, which is fantastic. And that all came down to us hitting three times. That all came down to us hitting three times. So Iron Boulder comes in. The Boulder comes in. It is booster energy and speed, probably. Speed was heightened. There we go. We now sack off Cyclozar. We now sack off Cyclozar. I'm hoping they go for an attack here. Hoping they go for a close combat to lower their defenses. That'd be nice. Motorola comes in. There's the Swords Dance. There's the Swords Dance. There's the Swords Dance. So now we have to hope and pray. So we go for a Draco Meteor here all the time. They go for a Mighty Cleave, though. That's going to KO Cyclozar. Iron Boulder's probably going to win this for them. Probably going to win this for them, Iron Boulder is. Uh, best bet, Suicune Living and Mighty Cleave. I don't think it does, though. We're not defensively invested. We are um, a, a special attack invested. So if we can live, it's great. We get Scold off. I don't think we do. They go for the Mighty Cleave. Let's see if it KOs us. It does KO us, unfortunately. As that means we do go down to the Iron Boulder. But we will we will go out fighting. So let's go for the Weavile Switch. Let's go for the Weavile Switch. We'll go for a Fake Out, because why not? And then we'll go for an Ice Shard, just to get as much damage off on the Iron Boulder as possible. Just so we can say we finished fighting. So they flinch and can't move. We then go for an Ice Shard, and even if we get a crit, it's no big deal. There we go. Close combat comes through. That's going to KO Weavile in one shot. And that's going to be the game. So GG, Jules, aka Violet. That was a really fun one. It came right down to the wire. 
Iron Ball already came back for you there. That's a great play leaving that to last because it really wrecked me. And great play going for that Swords Dance. I could have knocked off there and it would have still done a lot of damage. I should have knocked off there just in case they Swords Dance and then got a little bit more damage off on them. But it is what it is at the end of the day. GG. And there you have it. The end of the video. Feel free to try the Heracross team out. There's also a pokey paste in the description down below. Thank you for watching today's video. Feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next battle.